anyway let's start start the uh let's start with the arena okay we get e4 I'm gonna play e5 here let's go knight c6 here d4 now my opponent's playing the scotch which is pretty reasonable again what I recommend against the scotch is always trading and going bishop to c5 if plays bishop c5 it's funny I don't think I've ever seen this move by the way I'll go here and trade the bishop this looks like a cheese attempt with bishop g5 and now I just take with the queen pawn on e4 is weak I also have queen b4 but now I can just take and already he's he's in some trouble here with he blocks I'll trade he can take with the knight and he takes with the bishop loses the knight and now it's game over this castle keep it simple develop the pieces I should have bought Bitcoin 10 years ago and then you have some money nowadays I did own Bitcoin I own Bitcoin at $900 and I sold it at uh I sold it for, at 40 was it 4500 or 4000 or something it was somewhere in that range I don't remember exactly where I sold it but yeah I did own Bitcoin and I sold it for a nice profit so um I, I don't I don't know what you're asking me exactly let's go c6 and bishop f5 here and then rookie eight I just want to trade the pieces off and win the game go rookie eight just trade off the rooks straightforward here I have the extra bishop so I just want to trade off all the heavy pieces on off the board immediately that's just the plan how do you use rooks effectively you want to use rooks on open files so there's only one open file here so generally you're looking to like stack um stack pieces on the open file like I want to stack the rooks on this there's only one open file there's only one open line and so I want to put both the rooks on the open line rooks on open files that's like oxygen to the rooks well I invest into lucid um I actually I own lucid when it was a SPAC and it went went public I think I bought into it like 15 I, I mean I did very well I did very well on it um I I, I think I bought into it at like 30 or something and I sold cover calls at like 45 or something for like 20 bucks maybe it wasn't 20 bucks but something insane I did very well before it all collapsed let's just take I'm just gonna sack here because I can simplify the position now I'm just gonna trade the rooks off here and it's all very very good I have one two three four five six seven he is one two three four he's down three pawns which is why I'm willing to sacrifice because at the end of the day I just keep trading off the material do I own or rent my dwelling I I own it um fully paid off so yeah I own it um let's go check let's go rook g2 check this should be a force made here there's no reason really to prolong this game there's nothing technical that I can explain that makes a difference keep going I think I'm saying if you bought Bitcoin when it was one dollars and you still have it current price you would have some money at then I guess okay you guys uh, let me put it this way that's like buying a lottery ticket anything that you buy at one dollar is going to be a lottery ticket let's play e5 here yeah I mean it, it, you buy anything at one dollar it could be a penny stock it could be Bitcoin it could be you're buying something as as like you know quote unquote an investment or something at one dollar there's probably like a 90 95 percent chance it's going to be worth zero dollars um okay we get we're going to play the four Knights here let's trade this is a classic uh scotch four Knights now I go Bishop b4 to pin the Knight so I can threaten to win the pawn I also develop this Bishop and then I can castle the King too so I threaten to take I castle three three actual reasons behind playing Bishop b4 let's take now I capture towards the center so I can build the center let's castle go d5 and trade some pawns now I'm gonna go c6 build a nice little chain of pawns here on c6 and d5 um let's go Bishop e7 I think I'm just saying if you did though that would be pretty crazy well actually I shouldn't I, sh I should be I, sh I shouldn't say that because I I did actually own a stock at um that I bought at two dollars and it's being bought out at forty dollars so um uh, I should uh I shouldn't I shouldn't say it like there's no chance of those things happening but it's very rare let's play rook b8 and then after b3 I'm gonna go rook to b4 and activate the rook on the fourth rank again it's kind of weird activation of the rook but it's on an open well if he's gonna hang the pawn I can just take but um but nonetheless I could go rook, rook b4 so let's go here guard the pawn on c6 play rook e8 move the bishop there's some issues here with these active bishops on g5 and d3 which can cause me problems could be some issues here but shouldn't be that bad Yeah, 
They added clips on kick. Yes, there are a lot. Of, there are a lot of clips on kick now. Indeed, there are. There there have been clips for a while. It's not. It's not like something super new. Not something super new. He goes knight b3 to trap my rook on b2, which is actually a very good move potentially. Um, I could go c5 here. Uh, that's, I actually I missed knight b3. That's a great move. Great move by my opponent. Um, I guess I'll just sack the rook then. I'm just gonna sack a rook here. Yeah, I go here, sack the rook, but I have the two bishops. It's not great, but it could be worse. I guess I'll go bishop to a3, stop knight c5 here. And then I'm going to... I guess I'll play... It's actually not a very good position for me here. I think I'm just going to play like... Um, I think I'm going to go bishop c5. I need to use these bishops on the diagonal. Like this bishop on this diagonal can spy everything. So he goes knight f5, logical move. I think I'm going to play... I'm going to go h5 here. And the reason I'm going to play h5 is I have the hook with knight g4 to hit the pawn. I also can go g6 to hit the knight. And after g6 takes, or after g6 knight moves, I can scoot up and I should be fine. Hey, who look, who, hey, look, who's my favorite chess streamer? That would be me. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying the stream, my friend. Um, again, pretty decent position here for me. I'm a little bit worse, but with the two Bs, I should be kind of in the game here. There's queen g3, which is interesting. Um, not a bad move per se, but the, the thing I don't like about queen g3 is that now I can trade the bishop for the knight. I give up the bishop pair, but after king g7, or actually, wait, wait, after h4, wait, wait, maybe I have h4 here to tickle the queen, because because he, he, the only reason I can't take the bishop is because of the pin, but I have h4 and I can take the bishop now. Yeah, he actually blundered, and now he has big problems, I think. Maybe not big problems, but he has problems for sure. Uh, I didn't play only up yet. The reason I was happy to trade the bishop, even though I had the bishop pair, is that this bishop is unopposed now. There's nothing that can get in the way. There are no pawns. There are no bishops. There's nothing you can put in the way. So the diagonal is completely open for the bishop. Completely open. When did he get you get a haircut? Uh, I cut my hair the other day because, once again, I'm not worth $50 million. Um, okay, now I can just take the bishop. Everything's guarded. I can slide the king over and then go knight to h7. If Actually, if he were to go queen g5, just to point it out, I can sack the bishop and then go knight to e4 with the double check and the double attack. So that's why you play queen h4. Oh, did I miss something? Did he find a trick to save the game? Ah, uh, he found a trick to save the game. I didn't see that. Ack. Yeah, there's nothing I can do. It's just a draw. I missed Rook B8 altogether. Yeah, it's just a draw. I just have to wait in the edge. I go here, King H8, King G8. And I just sit and wait. Yeah, it's just a draw. Let's keep going. All right, next game, let's play E4 here. Trivial Rant. Go C6 now. At the lower levels, there are many ways to play against Karkon. I think the simplest way, I remember when I was much younger, maybe I was like 2000, so in like 1998, I was playing in this turn, this uh, weekend tournament in Somerset, New Jersey. And at the time, I had only played the exchange with E takes D5 and Bishop D3. But then my stepfather actually showed me this quick line of Knight C3 with Knight G3 and H4, H5. And it is generally very easy to play. Now, my opponent doesn't know that he's supposed to take. He goes to E6. Now, the problem with playing e6 here, though, is the light square bishop is trapped behind this triangle wall. So I'm going to go e5, take some more space, and play knight f3 and bishop d3. When did I switch to kick? I was actually the first first big streamer to switch to kick. Um, I switched at the uh, at the end of March. Let's play queen g4 and hit the pawn on g7. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the original trailblazer. Although, I mean, yeah, there's like... Uh, the ones who have come over since are x, of course. X and amaranth and... I think Bruce, Bruce, uh, picked me up or Bruce, what, whatever, Bruce, whatever, whatever his username is. Um, not that I follow him, but, uh, there were a couple of them who came over, uh, much more recently than I did. It was age six. I'm just going to cast my king out of the center of the board. Um, play like 92 and 93. He's creating weaknesses and without a bishop here, 
the, there's a lot of Swiss cheese now on the dark squares around its king. A lot of Swiss cheese. What are the pros and cons? Honestly, there are no real cons. I mean, the only cons, as I see it, is that you don't have... Um, you don't have... I, I, I'm aware of Aiden Ross and Trainwrecks, obviously, you guys. But um, you don't have... Um, there's End Peasant, which you didn't realize exists. Um, the only real drawbacks is there are no sponsorship opportunities thus far um, with Kick. That's the only drawback. So... That's the only drawback. There's no sub button on mobile. Well, yeah, I mean, I was going to say the 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 main, the the main drawback from my perspective is that there's no um there are no sponsorship opportunities. That being said, in this current economy, even with the stocks going through the roof, with interest rates so high, companies don't have the same budgets for sponsorship. So that's the first big issue. Um, that I would say from my perspective. Now, in terms of general issues they have for getting viewership up, uh, obviously the mobile apps need to be improved without a doubt. You need to have like the full screen. You need to have casting. Um, all these little things need to be fixed um, without a doubt. Now, here I have check. If the king comes up, I can actually checkmate him very quickly. And if he blocks, well, that's GG. So I check and take. And we keep going. So yeah, the, the mobile stuff is very is very big, um, and then from my perspective, just the the fact that so many people view it as like this gambling gambling Valhalla, as they would say, uh, when it isn't. So let's play E4 again. So we're playing J Shaper, longtime sub of the Twitch channel, by the way, who I've seen before. Uh, now, one opening that I do think is reasonable to play as well is something like the Bishop's opening, where you bring the Bishop and the Knight out. Knight F3 is probably simpler, but Bishop's opening also quite easy to play. I'm gonna go D3 here, and now F4. Actually, let's go knight c3. Sorry, I want to stop d5 opening up the center. And now I take a knight f3 and castles. And I get this, like, very straightforward development. Play the bird. The bird is a bad opening at the beginner level. I think you need open. You need open space. Vienna, bishops, I mean, they're both pretty... They're both very similar at times. Let's go knight f3. Uh, it's always very late here whenever you stream. And by the way, I'm also an early riser like you. Well, beach, lad, if it's really late, you must be somewhere, like, in the far east. Maybe, like, Asia? I mean, I apologize for that, but I'm getting up early and streaming early in the U.S. You, you must be very far. You must be in Asia or somewhere if it's very late. I'm going to go here in D5. I've got a nice white center. India. Okay. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now I can go D5, open up the scope. Queen D4, also a very good move to hit both the pawn and the knight. Now I take and I have Queen A8 checkmate. Okay, resigns. Let's go next game. Okay, we're playing cornball regular again. E4, as I said, always the opening that I recommend. I do not recommend modern setups. I know uh, sometimes people see me do it and they try to be cool, but I think modern defense is very bad. And I'll, I'm going to show you why. It's because you give your opponent just way too much space. And even if what I'm playing is not the best, he's going to have real problems developing his pieces. Like, see, already as a beginner, you're taught to develop your knight towards the center. And he doesn't know how to do that. So he goes B6. And I'm not really trying to stomp him, but I'm going to stomp him to show you guys why it's such a bad opening. Goes to F6. I'm just going to develop. See, he doesn't realize he has to put the knight on H6. Because it's not a normal theme. When you're a beginner player, like, 90, 95% of the development has a knight going to F, F3, F6. 90, like, 95% plus. But he doesn't know what to do, so he's trying to get his knight out. And now he's just going to lose the game. And it's exactly why you should not play these sorts of systems. Because I wasn't trying to cheese him, but when I go E5 and I take all the space with the pawns, he doesn't know that he has to break break the pawn chain with C5. Doesn't know that he has to play knight 6 because he's always learned that he's been programmed to put the knight on F6 or F3 all the time. And so he tries to play F6, and he's just getting squished. So, yeah, I, I really don't recommend the modern. Really don't recommend it. Okay, now he just gets mated. Mate in two. See, I didn't do any. I didn't do anything special. But see, I, I wasn't even trying to cheese him. But the, the, this is why you cannot play these systems because when you play these systems, like here, the only reason that black is okay is because you can play c5 and start start trying to break the pawn chain. At an 800 level, you do not know anything about breaking up pawn chains. This is a, this is a probably a like 1500 plus level concept at least. So it's like it's just not something that you should play as a beginner because you you 
You give up too much space. If you, if you don't know that you can't put the knight here, if you go this way, it's very weird because you've also been taught don't put the knight on the rim. So you don't put the knight on the rim. You don't know about breaking up the pawn chain and you just lose games for no good reason, really. So I don't recommend it. Yeah, so the opening theory for this system is very hard to learn for low elo. Yes, and the, the themes are advanced themes. They're not obvious. Okay, I'll, I'm going to probably just play E4 because I, I truly believe E4 is the best move. I do. Great example of why you don't just learn theory, but understand the basics of the foundation. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to play the Spanish. Again, I really like the Scotch at the lower levels. I think it's a very good opening, just getting the getting the standard two bishops, two knights out, but doesn't happen. Now, my opponent plays knight f6, plays the Berlin. Reasonable choice, even at the beginner level, um, be, because because there's no you're still going to develop the normal ways of bishop e7 i personally wouldn't play it though because after castles you have to know you have to know you have actually to be careful not to lose the game very quickly there are tricks here even in this i hate the fian cheeto because of h4 h5 yeah also their wing attacks as well with h4 h5 so i'm playing bishop a4 we need more instructional advice as these yeah i'm trying to do more of these arenas i know for some people it's probably quite boring uh but I I rather enjoy it a lot of people enjoy enjoy this content on YouTube as well Genshin one uh I don't next time next time uh next time I, I get a Twitch deal for for Genshin I'll do it okay we get D5 which is already a blunder see this is why I don't recommend to actually playing the Berlin because you have to know to take and go knight D6 if you don't know that you try to default back into standard Spanish lines and now he's already blundered because the knight takes E5 like it's much it's much it's much better to just play A6 Bishop a4 and then like b5 or d6 or knight f6 but straightforward and it's, it's not like he still couldn't have played um b5 here and been fine or Bishop e7 but he because it's out of sequence the order looks off he blunders with d5 so you don't want to allow the situation at the beginning at the lower levels where there are multiple sequences transpositions and all these other things And it's already very, very bad for black. Very bad. So, yeah, I mean, I'll try to do more of these when I can. This is the opposite of boring. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so see, now, I mean, it's uh, now what I want to do is very simple. I'm, I'm up a pawn. I've castled the king. I've developed everything on this side. But you'll see that I have four juicers that are not in the game. The rook, the knight, the bishop, the queen. None of these are developed here. Um, More of these tips, please? Okay. What's up with the essaying? Are you talking? Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Now it goes queen e7. Now there are a couple ways to play this. What, the way that I'm going to play this, I'm going to take the pawn. E5 is objectively a better move, but it doesn't really fit with the themes of what I'm going to try to show here. So I'm going to take the pawn. He's going to capture. Now it's just a matter of developing these pieces. That's really the, the, the most important thing. I can't really attack him because if he takes with the knight or the queen, he can always just cover up with bishop e7 and castle. So with a lone rook on this open lane, there's not a whole lot that I can do. So I need to bring the, bring the boys to the party. Do I recommend to play the Scotch, uh, play the or normal Scotch? I think normal Scotch is good. You just have to be careful about the Bishop C5 lines. So I'm going to trade Knights because I'm up a pawn. So if he takes, I, I don't mind getting the double pawns here because then the Bishop gets very active immediately. Very quick development. So he takes, so I take, I have double pawns, but I can bring the Bishop out very quickly and put pressure. Now, both these Bishops are on great diagonals. And now my development is complete. Rooks are in the center of the board, and it's just winning. The, the simplest way to win this, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain why bishops can sometimes be so good, especially if your opponent doesn't have an opposing bishop. So you're going to see me show why this bishop can become so strong very, very soon. I take with a pawn not towards the center the reason in this case I didn't I could have I could have taken this way and played d4 I took with a d pawn simply so I could bring the bishop out quicker but yes actually taking this way and going d4 followed by bishop f4 with the white center is also completely reasonable too it's basically uh you know it's it's a uh, fielder's choice as we say in baseball you just pick a pick one way and you go with it yeah so I'm gonna trade I'm gonna take this pawn here And now I'm going to go Bishop B3. I could have taken the Knight, obviously hung it, but what I'm going to illustrate is why Bishops can be so strong. So 
I'll go rook c1 rook c7 and the reason that bishops can become, become so strong sometimes is right here there's no way to close diagonally you have no pawns to put in the way you have no light square bishop to put in the way so the bishop here becomes monstrous it's just very very strong I could have taken either pawn doesn't matter it's all winning um I guess I'll go I'm just gonna take this pawn to illustrate the point I mean also this bishop dominates the horse too the horse can't go anywhere either this horse is stuck because the bishop just controls all these squares as well as targeting f7 so I'm gonna go here stack on the seventh and create the the classic kebab I'm playing the scotch fight sometimes it's hard to punish opening mistakes by my opponent any recommendation you're saying if they play a scotch or if you play a scotch I'm gonna play here not rookie seven because of the ice skater so I create the luft first now I guard the bishop it was better to take the knight but that wasn't the purpose I'm trying to explain some themes here so I'm gonna create the double works on the seventh rank here and this knight is completely dead still has no jumps anywhere goes rook b8 so I will take the pawn oh you play the scotch are you saying scotch is white or black I go back still the same problem with the rooks on the uh, seventh rank goes here I check and then I meet him with rook h7 next move can we get e4 uh this time I'm going to play something a little bit more thematic not just e5 uh, I'm going to play a Sicilian here I'm going to play d6 trade and now knight of six attacking the pawn by the way the reason you also play d6 here it's the same thing I was explaining with like the modern is that if you go knight f6 white can play e5 and your knight has to move so when you play d6 you basically want to develop the knight and stop e5 so after d4 I trade I go knight f6 he develops and now I'm gonna play g6 which of course is the Sicilian dragon defense here because the pawns as everybody who has spent years studying constellation knows this this formation of the five pawns it, it follows the formation of Draco the classic constellation in the night sky um that we all see every night so that, that's that's where the origins of the dragon come from is the fact that these five pawns resemble the the Draco constellation let's castle here and now I'm gonna play knight to c6 he takes which is not a great move because what he does is he connects my pawns now all these pawns are connected kind of like a snake actually everybody played snake when they were younger if they're not super young um and he connects the pawns whereas here I have one two three or five connected but this pawn these two are split on an island so now I only have one on an island and these six pawns are all going to be able to move up the board very nicely and additionally now I can use the open file as well for my rook here with rook b8 so he goes b4 now I'm going to go here just to guard the pawn against the threat there are better moves like knight g4 at the higher levels but that's not really the purpose now he goes rook b1 but the thing is white is sort of by trading the knights he's giving me more chance to grip the center now if I wanted to go for some big cheese I'd go knight g4 followed by d5 with a checkmate on h2 but what I'm going to show you guys is why normally with white you don't want to trade the knights on c6 because now I can start to take much more of the center I can now play d5 and I'm getting some good grip here uh, now I actually have five connected by the way and now I can play e5 and d4 and I'm just starting to slowly take more and more of the center which is why normally with white in the, in dragons you don't want to trade these Knights because you give black more chance to start gripping the center and now after e5 you see the pawns are really being pushed I've got total control here I can use the other open file here put pressure on the pawn on c2 great great position for black goes rook to c1 now I'm trying to find a general technical theme here which it's hard to find a good theme for a beginner h5 is what I would I would normally play just to just to kick the knight out of town but it's not really a beginner theme or a concept so what I'm going to do instead is I am going to move my knight and try to play f5 and grip the center even more here with f5 and e4 this is great but how do we use the first bet to skip the second and reach the third <laughs> you guys seriously I'm gonna go e4 I'm gonna trade the bishops here maybe not the best way of playing it but again I just want to keep building building more of a center so here I'm going to go Knight to f6 back now now I'm guarding everything Knight guards all the pawns I can kick the Knight back now I can go Queen to e5 attacking the Rook and I can really just start taking all the space like on the King side now I'm going to start playing on the King side I'm playing the center of the board white is really in a lot of trouble here I will just take and white's kind of just running out of space and running out of oxygen just like on the submarine so I'm gonna go king h8 and rook to g8 here and now I use the open file I bishop to g4 and this is really this is just falling apart immediately I can just go check and that's me 
so what did he really do wrong what he did wrong was he traded the knights on c6 he should not have done that um too soon well actually to be fair that didn't happen right they, it just exploded right it just exploded they, they weren't stuck at the bottom right it just exploded um yeah so okay let's play Cillian again play d6 yet again and knight f6 it just exploded right it didn't they didn't actually sit at the bottom for days like what the media was saying uh it imploded exploded yeah okay let's just go a6 here the reason I play this is I want to play knight c6 and kick the queen but if I go knight six right away there's bishop b5 pinning the knight so I do this and now I go here no bishop b5 and now I develop the knight has to waste time moving the queen and now I continue the rest of my development on the king side so I guess here I will play e6 and develop my bishop and castle basic development so far from both sides both sides have developed good play from Ekrai now I'm gonna go b5 here I take some space I want to Fion Fion Keto my Bishop but also b4 is a threat so for example in this position if white were to play like King h1 b5 King g1 then I can play b4 kicking the Knight which guards the pawn but also taking more space so he plays b4 which is not a great move in most Sicilians because now after Bishop b7 eventually he's gonna have problems on the c file here So it's very difficult to play for for white. Uh, I accidentally unmuted the tab where I have my dashboard. Sorry about that. Um, uh, yeah, so he goes a4 here. I will just take the pawn on a4. Yeah, sorry about that. I I, I just I accidentally I have the tab muted. Um, so yeah, apologies. Okay, now he takes with knight. What he needed to do here was he needed to take with the rook. Uh, but he takes with knight. So now I take with the knight on b4, attacking the bishop on d3. It was bishop e2, and now I just take a pawn. And see, this is what happened here is like he very quickly he got antsy. He got like ants in his pants. And he tried to push pawns on the on the queen side, and just like that, he lost a pawn on both the queen side and in the center of the board. And these knights are really well placed goes knight b6 I'll just play rook to b8 it should be paused though. I don't know why it's playing weird anyway goes queen b1 now I'll play d5 creating a chain of three but also guarding the knight as well he hangs the pawn what was the big announcement the big announcement yesterday is that I will be playing in the FIDE World Cup at the end of July in Baku in Azerbaijan he goes queen one now there are many ways to win here I'm looking for themes I think the basic theme here is I'm just going to trade and try to trade more pieces of knight a4 I have bishop b5 which wins material but for the themes I'm just going to trade the uh bishop for the knight I, I can't wait for only up we're about 30 minutes away from that uh and the grand swiss as well but that's much uh knight c2 was a fork by the way but if I go knight c2 I lose the horse I lose both horses for the rook if I go here he takes this and then I lose the other horse in the corner so I don't want to give up these two horses for the rook that's why I didn't play it okay takes which now allows me to take now here again many ways to win but I'm just happy to trade off the Queens or win the Knight he has to trade off the Queens or lose the Knight actually he's gonna lose the Knight anyway I guess I trade and the Knight is actually stuck there are no good jumps anymore taken and now what I do is I just go rook b8 trade the rooks on the at the end of the board and this will be uh either an ice skater or a simple end game that I'm winning I go check trade off the rooks no heavy materials left I'll go rook b3 and trade off the rook for the knight or maybe he can try to dodge it but all the squares are covered here so he's kind of running out of running out of time I go h5 kick the knight back and now I'm just going to sack the rooks the knight is one last piece I want to get off the board go check let's start pushing the pawns and now I have three connected pawns no way to stop them all he resigns next game okay it goes d4 here so what I'm going to do in this position um is I'm going to play the Queen's Gambit decline which I think is fairly standard let's go e6 so you can actually give links and kicks chat no I don't believe you can um okay let's play knight to f6 and now I'm gonna play Bishop e7 standard Queen's game decline I developed the Knight and the Bishop and I just castle the King 
out of the center of the board. This is an opening that's played a lot at the lower levels. And now there are many ways to play this. What I, what I would say is that at the lower levels, you should be looking for the activity. Um, so if you're looking for activity, what I recommend is something like A6. Now this isn't the absolute best move, of course. Um, but what I'm looking for is activity. I want to open, I want to have an open diagonal. Now you could obviously play B6, which is completely fine. But if white trades the pawns, you get the bishop on B7, you're staring at it at a pawn. There's a pawn in front of the bishop on this diagonal. And it's very hard to understand the theme. So what I'm trying to do here is just get the open diagonal for my bishop here. And then I can play like knight d7 and c5. And with this open diagonal, it's, it's a lot easier to play with the open diagonals versus closed diagonals if you're newer to the game. So I'll go c5 here. So again, I think that's why like I don't recommend g3 or b b3 or g3 openings because you end up generally having closed diagonals. And I feel like if you're newer to the game, you want open diagonals for your bishops. It's very hard to understand how to use the bishops. Otherwise, let's play rook c8 and play queen b6. I want to dodge any threats on this open d file here. Uh, queen's game decline is pretty common I, at the at the lower i mean maybe it's not as common at lower levels as it once was but it's still pretty common um h6 b6 bishop b7 knight e4 i don't think it's a good choice because when you play those systems i'll explain after the game actually why i don't think that's a great choice um uh i'll explain after this game why i don't think that's a good choice h6 b6 yeah because i tried to explain it but without actually seeing the the moves on the board it might be a little bit hard to follow oh this is gold content okay he takes now I'm gonna take with a knight here which is a mistake but we'll see if he understands why okay you miss a, a great chance to take and then sack the Bishop because there is a theme with a Queen h5 idea actually I'll just explain it after the game um I'm gonna go h6 attack the Bishop Bishop h4 logical let's just trade some Rooks problem with taking with the rook is now I have b4 and the knight is actually trapped he doesn't have a good square I cover the critical squares here and the knight can't go anywhere so it's basically a dead horse on c3 and there are three pieces there there's one two three that are taking away the squares from the horse there so I just take and again still no squares really unlucky that it's the queen the knight and the bishop basically on the only the queen the knight or the queen the bishop and the rook on the wrong square so I trade and now I just take the knight and I win the game Goes 94. I'll just trade off. Not worried. I just trade. I go knight f8. Now I have an extra horse, which also guards against checkmates around my king. So this should be should be pretty simple. Now what I want to do is just trade off some pieces. Do I think I'll give the new lab grown chicken a try? I don't know whether that's a troll or what you're asking exactly. Nor do I particularly care. Goes b3. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go a5. The reason I do this is just like get rid of a target and I put the pawn on the opposite color of the bishop. Bishop cannot touch the pawns um and without the Bishop being able to touch the pawns everything is good in the world so let's play Rook d8 um and so everything's on the opposite color of Bishop I can trade some Rooks here I can go Rook d2 I just want to get rid of the material basically since I have the extra horse just get rid of the material goes Queen e2 I will play g6 and King g7 let's go King g7 here and now what I want to do is I want to bring the knight into the game. Knight's good, it's but it's a little bit passive here. The knight d7. Try to bring the knight into the game eventually on some of these dark squares. It's crazy to me how many of these concepts you constantly keep tabs on. Yeah. Okay, it goes f4. Not a bad move. I'm going to go here, just go after the pawn. I guess I'll I'll move my knight back again just keep an eye on this pawn no need no need to start moving the knight and potentially hang this up now he goes to e4 now what I'm gonna play here is I'm gonna go bishop to c3 just lock the bishop where it's guarded pawn and the bishop guard each other I still have ideas on all the diagonals but I can't lose the bishop because of this, this grip that I have so let's go queen to e3 and now eventually I want to go after these pawns on the dark square so they're opposite color of his light square bishop so because they're on the opposite color it'll be much easier to to go after them let's play g5 break up his pawn chain here and this will be winning very soon
So he takes, and now I think I can actually just take the pawn with check. And there should be a classic ice skater here as well as a potented right triangles on top of that. So like, okay, okay. So yeah, so I said I was gonna explain a few things. First things first, um, a couple things. First of all, I played a6, which is objectively not the best move, but the thing is the theme is more important than knowing the precise theory. For example, if you go b6 and you get some position like this, there, there are two things. First of all, the bishop is, there's a, the diagonal is closed. Bishop has no, 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 uh, no scope. The pawn's in the way of the bishop, no scope. So it's very hard to understand how you're supposed to play this with this bishop here, because it's not an active piece. It's a very passive piece. Down the road, maybe you can reroute it or something like that, but nothing is going to happen with this bishop for a good 20 moves. Um, additionally, if you play something like this, you have to know when to play something like knight e4. And the problem in general with these setups is that white can always go rook c1, and understanding how to deal with this potentially slight weakness of the pawn on c7, it's very, very difficult. Like, for example, here, knight d7 is okay, but if you're doing basic calculations, you see takes, takes, takes. Bing, bang, boom, you're going to lose some material here. So it's very hard to understand what the right development is. Now, yes, you can go F5 somewhere as well, but like just as an example, what are you supposed to play here as a beginner player? Obviously for me, it's different, but what are you supposed to do? Because they're, they're big threats. First of all, there's 95, which is a, a big problem with an outpost. But even here, say you go H6 and 92. What do you do about this pawn on C7? Do you go C6 and close this diagonal permanently? Do you try to play C5? It's very difficult to understand what you're supposed to do if you're like 1,000 level player. So that's why I don't really recommend ideas like this. I think it's very, very difficult to play this position. It's the same reason that I don't recommend you play like modern structures. Like, for example, say you play, um, whoops, with a white piece. Let's just say, um, let me flip the board for a second. Um, how do I flip the board? There we go. Um, it's like, for example, you, you got some position like, I, I know that these aren't the actual right moves, but you know, you got some position like, uh, some position like this, um, just to illustrate the point. It's like, what do you do here? How do you open up the scope? The bishop is staring at a, at, at a relatively closed diagonal. This diagonal also not, not great either. You move the knight, black and black and always just, or if you move this knight, black can always go d5. It's very hard because when you play with bishops on these, which are fianchetto, you have to know where the pawn breaks are. And understanding pawn breaks is very difficult to the lower levels, which is why I don't really recommend playing b3 or g3. Same reason that in this game, if, if we go back to it and I flip the board here, I don't really recommend playing b6, bishop, b7. Now, someone who's stronger, they're going to say, well, you played a6. Oh, it's a bad move, theoretically. Like, white is better here after this a6 move. But at the end of the day, at the lower levels, the theory doesn't matter so much as concepts. And when I play a6 and I play, play with b5, I get the open diagonal. There's plenty of scope for the bishop. And it's very easy to then play for c5, c5 next move. And at both the diagonals are completely open for these two bishops. Open diagonal. So it's much easier to, to play than with the closed diagonals with b6, which is why I would say you should play it. So back to the game. Um, what, what I was trying to say about this position is my opponent had a nice tactic here with bishop takes knight, takes and he could sack the bishop. Because after I take, there's queen to h5, check king g8 takes. And it's basically a draw here or white to sack the bishop, but I can never dodge the checks. So that was the next point. I think that was really the only other point I had to explain from this game. So let's play our next game. All right, let's play e4 yet again. C6, and now I'm going to play d4, um, and it, I can play knight c3 here, which is which is well, the two lines where I suggest exchange or knight c3 generally. Let's take. Now it goes knight f6. I'm going to play knight to g3 back. Now this is not the best move, but generally players at lower levels are not going to know they're supposed to play h5, and he goes bishop f5, which actually isn't a blunder, by the way. <laughs> Okay, so you know what? My opponent got my I'll tell you exactly what happened. My opponent meant to play bishop f5, but he confused his lines. He didn't have it memorized to 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 t. So he plays here first and then he thinks he can go here. Now, the funny thing is this is not a blunder because after knight takes bishop, there's actually queen a5 check, which wins the knight back, but he plays g6. Now I can just move the knight. I'm um, simply have a piece. It's not a blunder though. It's actually not a blunder because he can play check, hitting the king and capturing the knight next turn. Let's go knight f3. And now I'm just going to develop the bishop and castle my king out of the center of the board. Play queen e2, rook d1, bishop g5. Just simple play. All right, maybe I'll go c3 to connect the chain first. And now I just want to bring the bishop and the rook into the game. Are there free resources you can recommend for those? My wife isn't letting me spend money on chess, so finding decent resources has been hard. Um, 
so Simi, uh free resources i think on chess.com a lot of the resources even if you don't have full access uh are, are good enough um i think there are many youtube videos like i would say john bartholomew's videos are very good um for for beginners i, I think things along those lines are what i would recommend um buy a new wife bro i mean find one well okay yeah i mean i think there are probably are free trustable courses i i mean I, I I'm trying to figure out what exactly I would I would recommend um lead chess also exists yeah lead chess exists um as well yeah I don't have a problem with lead chess personally no he goes c5 here now I'm just gonna trade pawns here and play bishop e3 I just got this one I, I just got this wife last month cost me 28k very funny Simi play bishop e3 and rook d1 just bring all my pieces to the center of the board I'm just gonna trade the bitch for the Knight here I'm happy to trade the bitch for the Knight and just move the Bishop back maybe play like uh just play like 94 and trade the pieces a lot of them are I mean like you know actually I'm gonna find what is this uh what's the it has there's this book that uh has Bobby Fisher on the cover let I'm gonna um uh let me see if I can find this book yes I think okay you guys so let me open this image in a new oh, uh, open image in a new tab yes yeah, so let, let me pull this up okay so I'm gonna tell you guys something so you see this cover I'm, I'm gonna blow it up of course I'll control pluses so it's much bigger um I I don't know where this book is available but you, but let me make this one 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 pixel smaller um but there was this book that's called Bobby Fisher teaches chess um and this is a book that is that it's not really a book it's just tactics puzzles but when I was very young and I first started out this literally was what I used. I literally used this book and I, I literally just went through I set up the pieces on my my small little magnetic chest set, which of course just sounds ridiculous in 2023 but I set up all these pieces on my little magnetic chest set I would try to solve the puzzles and these are the sorts of things that I cannot stress enough are more important than theory or anything else puzzles puzzle puzzle if you do like thousands of tactics you are going to get better just from that alone you're going to get better inevitably there's no question about it so um that's what I would do when I was much younger when I first started out that's actually how I learned that's how I learned um is is basically I I, I have these pu puzzle books with thousands of puzzles and I literally just set them up on my, my regular chessboard or my magnetic chess set and I would just go through all of them over and over and over and over again over and over again that makes me a little bit like nostalgic too though Let's play rook d3 here I'm just going to trade off the the bishops bishops and the rooks here actually I thought of some fun content actually I thought of some fun content okay I thought of some fun content so uh I I thought of something fun that we're going to do after this since we're talking about magnetic chess sets and like retro and old stuff I thought of some some really fun content so okay uh let's just trade off here let's take let's take the knight covers the classic square let's trade the rooks off not a react video no I thought I thought of some fun content yeah um Okay, let's trade some rooks. Let's go king f1, maybe rook d7 next move. Let's go here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, this, I'm actually psyched. I just thought about this. Uh, I'm psyched. Let's go here and go after the pawns on g6 and f5. We're gonna we're, we're gonna go hunting in a second you guys so I'm taking I'm using D's Knights are coming into the game let's take the pawn I'm threatening to meet him on G7 by the way next move I have to make sure I'm not signed in that's the only thing uh we get King H7 is actually checkmate here 
Or we were playing Soup Sailor. Now he goes to E4 now. Again, I think Sicilian is a pretty good, pretty good concept. Actually, I guess I'll make sure I'm on Firefox. Um, so I'm not signed in anywhere. Okay. Okay, we got C3. Uh, this is the classic, um, this is a classic, uh, um, uh, Alapin Sicilian or C3 Sicilian. Now, there are many ways to play against this. Uh, this is actually what my brother played for his entire chess career from the time he started out until he quit playing chess. So I have a lot of familiarity with this, uh, with this opening. So I, I think this is a reasonable choice. Um, now I'm gonna tell you guys, I, I alluded to this game that I played in, when I did the confessional booth with, um, during my game against D. Gukesh, I alluded to this game um, that I played in 1998. Uh, and the reason I alluded to this game is because the game against Gukesh, even though it was out of D4, was the same isolated pawn structure. And um, all the way back, I think it was 1998, I played the World Youth Chess Festival. And I played a game against this player from Portugal. His name was Jao Costa. And the preparation that I did before that game was with this exact setup. And I'm going to... It was with Chess Base... It was like Chess Base five or something actually let me see chess base um let me let me let me see if it's chess base five or was there a chess base it, it, it's so old that i can't even find images anymore let's go bishop seven castle it's like i think it was chess base five or chess base four um i'm i'm, I'm looking for this um yeah, let me open this image. Okay, I'm going to castle here. I'm going to play knight c6, rook d8, and bishop d7. This is my exact prep from 1998 for a game that I played in the World Youth Chess Festival. Um, and the point of what you're doing here is you just develop the knight, the bishop, bring the rooks to the center of the board, and then you go from there. So I play like knight c6. And I'm going to go like queen d8 if he, if he tries to attack me. And I go bishop d7, rook e8, bishop f8, knight e7, knight e5. This, this was my prep from a game that I played in the World U Chess Festival in 1998. Yeah. Let's go Bishop D7. I want to play Rook C8, Rook E8, Bishop F8, Knight E7, and then Bishop C6. This was, th this was my preparation for a game that I played only 25 years ago. Good God, 25 years ago. Jeez, ridiculous. Um, absolutely ridiculous to think about that. Um... <laughs> Yeah, this, I played the World Youth Chess Festival. It was a tournament for the best players around the world. So at the time, only the best player was able to go to the event. So like best player from like, say, China, best player from Russia, best player from the U.S. They had an under 10 section, 12, 14, 16, 18. Nowadays, because of this terrible thing called capitalism, anybody, anybody can go play if they're willing to pay the entry fee. So it's no longer the, only the top players from every country play, but anybody can play if they're willing to pay the entry fee. Um, so when I went, it was just the absolute number one player from every country I could play. That was it. So like I played for the United States in the under 10, under 12s and everything else. And um, I played against the number one Portugal player. Now, I don't think that we actually got the, into the Alpin in our game, but I remember the preparation for whatever reason. So yeah. Anyway, okay. Things have been traded, but I have the two bishops here with much more scope or in an end game. I am a little bit better because again, these bishops can target from long distance. These knights have no targets whatsoever. So I'm going to go here, go after this pawn. And this bishop, this bishop and this knight really cause quite a lot of problems here. Why would someone want to play? Because they actually are going to learn a lot. Like they can watch this back. They can, they can either watch, they can, they can actually have it open on stream and learn from it. They can also watch it back when we publish our YouTube videos. It's a good chance to learn. It's a very, very good chance to learn. That's the point. And, and I'm not stomping them either. That's the other point. Like I'm not trying to just like cheese them and like win in 10 moves. If I was trying to stomp them, there would be no actual value to it, but I'm not trying to stomp them in these games. So he goes to 94 and I could take the pawn. Um, and why not? Let's just take the pawn. It's a free pawn. He's played a good game. He's played a very good game. Plays rookie one. Now, rookie one actually is a better move because he puts pressure on the knight. And then he can capture the pawn, which he's currently down right now. So rookie one would be better because the bishop covers the square. So like rookie one knight before, he probably was worried about the ice skater, but the bishop covers the square. So he goes rookie one. Not, not the end of the world either, though. Um, pretty decent move. I'm going to go bishop before to attack the rook now. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, he goes for K1. I'm going to play Knight C3 here. So I'm just trying to look up some stuff on eBay. Um, okay. One second. Um, actually, I'm looking up something on eBay. I'm just, I'm just going to put it in my cart. There's only one left. Uh, one second. Uh, he goes H3. I'm going to play Bishop D5 here. Sorry, I, I got I to gotta put this in my cart. It's $113. One second. Wait. Just so that someone doesn't buy it before I do. Uh, uh, um, one second. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go. Bishop, Bishop takes knight. If he takes with a knight, I have ninety-two at the fork, and I win the game. Um, one second. Also, I need to get my get my phone. Let's go ninety-two. Check and win the bishop. I'm just need a code for PayPal. One second. Take the bishop on f4. Too late. I, I have billions in oil. I just bought all of it. Yeah. Um, okay, there we go. Oh, I'm on Let's go Bishop D6 here. Guard the Knight. I, I will share it. It's just there's only one. Um, uh, let's go Bishop to B8. Yay, I ordered it. Okay, you guys. I ordered it once. Let's go 96. Let's Okay, I, I think I'm just going to skip the last game of the arena. Once I win this, we'll just move on. Uh, let's go knight c5 and play knight e4. Yeah. This is going to this is going to be this is going to be rad, you guys. This is going to be freaking rad whenever this arrives. This is going to be really rad. Let's go knight e6. Okay, let's go uh, h5 here. Yeah, I'm, I will after this game. Let's just go here. Let me just win this game quickly. 113 bucks, not cheap actually. Did I just came and buy a Lambo? <laughs> a Lambo for $113? Oh, I'm I'm really I'm really happy. I'm really happy. I feel like I feel like a kid in the candy store again. Let's go Rook C1. Oh, let's just take and go check and take the pawn. Now nah, I just push P. Let's go here. Go here. I have Rook A4 or B3, B2. Go Rook A1. Go rook d1, win the knight, win the game. Yeah. Okay, we got the win. All right, you guys, we're going to move on.